fourth day of the project. We have decided I'll finish the bed myself after uh, Johan and Bea leaves. They won't be using it for some time anyway and uh, there is still a lot of work to be done if it's going to be a nice bed. But we'll press on today. I'll bring them in so they can do a little bit of work themselves on what will eventually become their own bed. We'll just get on with it. Now for the wedges. There are 12 of them and that's quite a lot of wedges to cut and a lot of wedge holes to cut. So instead of making them square I will use this jig that I developed a couple of years ago when I made a small series of knockdown shelves. This is put on a drill press and the plank that's going to have the hole is put on this surface which uh, makes you drill the hole at the bevel. And the wedges themselves are made on this jig. I made that for the table so Use round stock for that. Cut a piece of round stock the same length as this block of wood. And you insert it in the hole in the end, like so. So this piece is cut off. And then you run it over the table saw. And that uh, cuts the, the round piece in half diagonally. So you get two, two wedges in the same shape and it's very easy to reproduce wedges if you lose any in the future. It will also save a lot of time I hope so that's what I'm gonna try. These lines will tell me where to put the holes for the wedges. So I'll do that on all 12 tenants, then I'll take the bed apart and start drilling. And see if I can give uh, Bea something to do with the bed in the meantime. The bevel of the wedges is perfect. It presses against the inside of the tenon on both sides and the flat surface sawn on the diagonal will press against both flat sides of the post. 
and I want it to be a little bit too big now because this will dry and shrink and also compress because it's a soft wood and I will also plane the posts a little bit so I will take off material on the outside that also means it will drop further down into the hole even now I could hammer them in a little bit harder if I wanted to but above all when I plane the post there will be a noticeable difference so the system works great I'm very happy for that haven't been using these jigs for a couple of years looks good works great and saves a lot of time so uh, I'll just finish the rest of the holes make all the wedges plus a couple of spare ones since it's so easy to make and uh, do another test fitting of the frame. frame fits together nicely. Next step is to do the cutouts on the side planks after that. Planing off the posts and the planks, uh, the support system for the mattress on the inside, then decorations on the top of the posts. Determine the final height of them as well. They are a little bit tall now. But it's looking great so far. I'm really pleased. Nice project. Lunch. Lunch break is over. Now for uh, the cutouts 
along the sides. Before I can do that I have to determine where the support beams for uh, the mattress and the rib bottom that supports that will be put on the inside of, uh, of the side planks. And uh, because the, the ribs that will support the mattress are in two halves, 70 centimeters wide, and the mattress's total width is 142. Because of that, I need a central beam. And I would have put it there anyway, even if I had ribs that were. 142 long, but that will be made out of one of these standing on the upright, and they are 90 millimeters. So uh, I have to de determine how low I can put this in the frame construction and measure up from that. This is as low as I can go, it's just above the bottom edge. And I checked it uh, on the other side as well. That plank is a little bit wider, so it's uh, like 10 millimeters higher from the bottom edge on that one. And from that mark up to here is 90 millimeters. So that's the height I will uh, measure up from. I will actually add an extra 10, 10 millimeters, because that's the thickness of the ribs that will lay on top of, uh, of the beams. So now I just uh, check the height up to there and transfer that to, uh, to the ends of the sideboards and then I know from what level to uh, measure up to the edge and then determine how much I can cut down. The mattress is 12 centimeters thick and they will put an extra thin mattress on top of that which will probably be three and a half centimeters which is 15 and a half in total which is uh, just about six inches for you imperial people. And I will uh, cut down so I land somewhere around uh, 13, 14 centimeters, around five and a half inches. Because the mattress, uh, it's not nice to sit on the edge of the bed if, if the edge of the side plank digs into your thighs. So I want to plan it. So the mattress sits a little bit above the edge of the plank. I measured 37 centimeters up from the floor, or the bottom of the legs actually. And I have to do the same here. Add 10 millimeters for the ribs. So that's the height from, from where the mattress is will uh, be measured. And I said I would take down the edge of the plank to around 13 or 14 centimeters. I think I'll go with 14 actually. And that's here. Obviously I will not cut away all the way from from the post now, I will let this edge be to around here and then I will cut down because uh, that won't take, take away any strength from the construction and it will look a little bit better also, I hope. Anyway, I did it on uh, one of my, and my girlfriend's former beds and uh, that looked good, so I'll do the same here. So I'll transfer that measurement to uh, all the four points and then I will take the bed apart or 
as much as I can get the side planks out anyway and uh, do the cutouts. Well, that will have to do for today. It's getting late. Time to finish and get some supper. But that's uh, one step closer to the finished bed. See you tomorrow. <laughs>